In this lecture, we are going to talk about the spaces created within a crystal lattice um, that we call lattice holes. So we'll, we'll be focusing on ionic solids. These are going to be held together uh, by the electrostatic attraction between a positive and a negative charge. And so we'll have cations and anions coming together in our solid. And we'll track coordination number then by the number of those positive negative interactions that are actually really just an ionic bond. Um, and so how many cations does an anion interact with in a solid? Or how many anions does a cation interact with in a solid? We'll see that the higher that coordination number is, the more of those positive negative attractions are going to be occurring. And so the more stable the solid is actually going to be. This lowers the potential energy of the solid makes it harder to break it apart. Cations and anions are pretty different sizes. Uh, typically our cations are gonna be smaller than our anions, but we could be bringing together two cations and anions that um, have really different sizes. An anion could be really small if it's like a fluoride ion. Um, but we don't expect to be packing the same sized balls into the same space. And so the, the kind of, empty spaces created in a crystal lattice can be used by a smaller ion to, uh, to fill that space. So we're going to look at two of these types of holes in a lattice that can be occupied by um, another atom. Uh, first, we'll start with tetrahedral holes. So imagine you have, and this is going to try to show right here, that you've got three atoms as a, a layer. And you would create kind of a hole resting on top of them. And then we would have on top of that, that space, uh, another atom right here that is circling green. And I'm going to try to make my, I don't know if my video will actually get bigger when I did that. Hopefully it will, because I want to show you this. So what we're saying is that we're creating a base that is three of these balls or atoms, ions, um, and when we place another one here and another layer, there's a little space in here. It might be easier to see this if we actually put something that's a different color. So I have my three balls here with, I'm putting a different ion in the center and this would come over here. So the, the space that is the tetrahedral hole is really that space right there that's being occupied. And this is hard to do just holding them in my hand. Um, by the red ball. And that's where our tetrahedral hole is. And of course, these are a little bit more perfectly spaced out in nature than smashed in my hand. Um, so that's one type. And we'll see that the holes there have, um, or a hole would have four different atoms interacting with it. That's where it gets that tetrahedral name. Now our next one is going to be something that's created um, in an octahedral space. So it'll be touching uh, eight different atoms, or have eight different faces, so it'll be touching six different atoms. So our, our white with the black right here, this is our base layer. Oops, again, our base layer like this, where there's three. And then we're gonna create an octahedral hole right here by layering another three um, atoms, and these are represented in the blueing on top of it. And so let me try this again. So I've got my three. My hole is right here, represented by the red. And right now it's touching three different atoms. Now, instead of putting just one on top, we are gonna have three more interact on top. And so we can see this hole is going to interact with three atoms on the bottom and three atoms on the top. So I'm trying to show this in a way that makes some sense and move it around. So again, it's kind of like, doesn't work very well. Um, so you'll have this three on top, three on bottom, and so that atom will be touching six different atoms and kind of creating eight different faces of that interaction. And that's going to be our octahedral hole. All right, I'm going to make myself a smaller size, and hopefully my video of my, my, myself with those balls zoomed out for that and then went back down. I'm not 100% sure. 
All right, so so let's let's take a look at this in a face centered cubic arrangement in a crystal structure. Um, so I've got a unit cell here, and the the gray atoms are representing that face centered cubic arrangement, where we have an atom on each corner. I'll make them a green um, of our crystal structure, and then we also have an atom um, in the center of each face of that unit cell, right here. And so there's six of these because there's six faces to a cube. Um, and here, oh, that's a lot of green. That's okay. Uh, so there's a couple different holes that can be created in a face centered cubic. There's octahedral holes, which means it's going to um, have a hole that has six other atoms touching it. And so these ones we can see um, here in these spaces. And the, the best one to look at is the one smack in the center of our unit cell. That one has an atom that's on the top of it and the bottom of it touching it. And then one on the right, left, and then front and back. So it has six different atoms touching it, creating this octahedral shape um, for that hole. And there's a number of these other holes too. That's the only one that's actually in the center of it then there are more of these octahedral holes that you'll see on each of these uh, corners of our unit cell. And these are octahedral holes that are created by that unit cell and the adjoining unit cells in the larger crystal structure. Um, but for each one then, there's really this one um, full hole, octahedral hole in a face centered cubic smack in the center. Uh, so now looking at the tetrahedral holes that are created by this, um, we've got, this one I think is the easiest to see right here. It is um, interacting with a atom in one of the corners and then three of the atoms that are on the faces of it. And so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these tetrahedral holes that exist within inside the face centered cubic. And each of these are going to be one of the corners and then three of the faces. And so here's another example here. There's one right here where there's a corner and then three of the faces that creates the space for this tetrahedral hole right here. So if we wanna actually answer this question, within a face centered cubic structure, there's one octahedral hole there's a corner of lots of different holes around it, right? Like there's a total of probably 12 of them or 13, 13 um, that uh, this unit cell participates in, but there's one full octahedral hole in the center. And then for our tetrahedral holes, we have um, eight. And those are all inside that unit cell rather than on an edge. So let's take a look at an example of an ionic compound here. Um, this is going to be a compound made up with cesium ions and chloride ions. Uh, so the first step is like, what is the actual coordination number of this? So looking at this cesium ion, it's interacting with these four let's use this, chlorine ions right here and here on the top, and then four more on the bottom. So that's gonna be a total of eight interactions. And if you think about a chloride ion here on the corner, it's gonna be interacting with a, a unit cell that is um, in each of these planes here. So it's actually gonna be at each of these corners, there's eight unit cells that come together. And so this chlorine ion is going to be interacting with the cesium ion in the center of each of these eight unit cells. So the chlorine ion is gonna have eight interactions and the cesium ion is gonna have eight interactions. That's gonna give us a coordination number of eight. So based on this unit cell then, what is the actual um, chemical formula for this ionic solid? Well, knowing that the coordination number is the same for these, it's, it's fair to guess that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, that it's cesium chloride. But if we want to break this down and actually count the atoms inside our compound, we'll see that I've got one cesium atom that's in the center, 
That means the whole atom is in there, so there's one atom. Looking at the chlorines, I have eight um, atoms that are all on a corner. So each corner interacts with a total of eight unit cells. Um, and so each one has an eighth of that atom. And if you just look at uh, uh, XYZ plane, you can see this. There's eight quadrants, right? There's um, one, two, three, four. Sorry, that's hard to color in. But you have these four quadrants right here, one on the top and then one on the bottom for each quadrant. So you end up with eight. So that means that we're going to have a total of one atom, eight divided by times one eighth is going to be one atom of chlorine. And so I'll have cesium one, chloride one. Let's look at another example. This one has calcium and fluorine in it. Um, and so looking at this, each of these fluorine atoms is in a tetrahedral hole. And we have a, a face centered cubic arrangement of our calcium atoms. So each of those fluorine atoms is experiencing a coordination number of uh, four. And then let's take a look at one of our calcium atoms. Um, if I look at this calcium atom right here, it's interacting with just one of these fluorines, but it is on a corner. And so it is doing the same interaction in each of the eight quadrants around it. And so our, C or calcium, sorry if I said cesium, is really interacting with eight different fluorine atoms. And each fluorine is interacting with four calcium atoms. And so this tells me that there's going to be a difference in my ratio, my molar ratio, my calcium to my fluorine. And so um, I'm going to expect a two to one just because that's the difference I'm seeing in my coordination numbers. Um, but let's take a look at how many atoms we have in this unit cell. Um, so let's start with our fluorines. Um, they're in the tetrahedral holes within a face-centered cubic arrangement. That means that the whole atom is in here. Uh, and so we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight atoms. Then if we look at our calcium, sorry, I was looking at my notes. <laughs> Making sure I wasn't missing something. So my calcium atoms, I have these corner ones on the top and on the bottom. So that gives me eight corners. And we know that those are each one eighth of an atom because eight unit cells will come together at each one of those points. So that's going to give me one atom. Uh, but I also have them on the faces. And I have six faces to a cube. And each one of these cubes uh, or unit cells right here has a face centered atom that's shared with another unit cell. Since it's being shared with just one more unit cell, it's going to have half of an atom in this one. So I have six faces, each at half an atom. So I've got three for a total of four calcium atoms. So I have a four calcium atom, eight fluorine atom compound, and I can reduce that to calcium F2, or 1 to 2 ratio. All right, let's look at one that isn't quite a perfect pattern. So here we have chlorine atoms in a face-centered cubic arrangement, and then cadmium cations occupying some of the holes. Um, these are in the octahedral holes of the face-centered cubic arrangement of the chloride ions. And we can see there's one smack in the center. And not all of the octahedral holes are filled in this structure, which is a common thing that happens. We have two here and two here that are being shared with other unit cells. So looking at the coordination number here, um, for our cadmium, looking at that, each one of these is interacting with six of our chloride ions. 
And each of our chlorine atoms is going to be interacting with one, two, three. So I'll do that again. So I'm looking at this one right here. It's interacting with the one in the center, the one above it. There is not one below it. There is not one on this corner, even though it looks like it's back in the back corner. There isn't one here, but there will be one in the center of each of these unit cells. So there'll be one right here that it's interacting with. Okay. Um, so now if I wanted to create a unit cell based on this, I can do the same thing I did before. This tells me it'll probably be a one to two ratio just from my coordination number. Um, but I can look at this in within my unit cell. If I have a face centered cubic on my chlorides, this is gonna be the same as my calcium ions in the previous problem. I'm gonna have eight atoms on corners for one atom. And I'm gonna have six atoms on a face, which will each be half of an atom. So I'll have four chloride in this um, structure. My cadmium, I have one in the center, and that's a full atom. And then I have these ones right here that are on the, um, they're not on a corner, they're like on a um, edge, I guess is the way to say it, where it's really going to be shared with um, only four other unit cells rather than eight. Um, and I've got four of these. I've got one, two, three, four. And those will each be one fourth. So I have a cadmium two chloride four, which I can reduce to cadmium Cl2. All right, our next uh, video, we're gonna walk through the solution to uh, this chemical formula for a perovskite structure that has barium, yttrium, oxygen, and copper. But I think you should try this first on your own and then watch the following video.